sometimes as women it's easy to kind of play it small and not, you know, back yourself. And what have you got to lose? Like, that's the thing. You know, I don't have anything to lose in building, you know, a kick-ass business. You're listening to Elevate, the official podcast of Elite Agent for real estate industry sales professionals, property managers and leaders. With thanks to our partner Connect Now, Elevate brings you the best tools, thinking and strategies to elevate your results. To get access to all of Elite Agent's premium resources, including a detailed episode guide for this podcast, visit joineliteagent.com. And for more information about how Connect Now can make moving easier on your clients, visit connectnow.com.au. Here is your host, Samantha McLean. Welcome to another episode of the Elevate podcast, where we delve into some of the most interesting minds in business and in real estate for the very best tips and strategies for you to implement to elevate your business. I'm Samantha McLean, editor of Elite Agent and host of today's show. My guest today is Elite Agent Magazine's summer cover, Hayley Vanderven. With over 20 years of real estate experience, Hayley is an agent growth specialist and the director of Remax Results. So Hayley, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Sam. I really, really appreciate it. Well, it's great to have you here and it's great to have you on our on our summer edition cover, which is out right about now. How does that feel? Oh, overwhelming. Like when you sent me the little sneak peek, I'm like, <gasps> and then I had a little ugly cry. It was very, very cool. And um, then I had to quickly pull myself together because I realised I was, you know, had to go back into a function. So, it was, <laughs> yeah, like thank you so much. I just... I am absolutely blown away and I had so much fun shooting the cover with you guys. It was just a great laugh. Yeah, it was, well, it was really great for us because at the end of the year, um, we hadn't had a Queensland cover story in so long. And we'd been thinking about, you know, who in Queensland, who in Queensland, who in Queensland, and and your name just kept coming up over and over and over again as someone that's done amazingly well during this very challenging couple of years. Um, so tell me about tell me about the last couple of years for you. Oh, the last couple of years has been a real whirlwind. Um, you know, at the start of COVID, I was kind of picking myself and dusting my, you know, picking myself up and dusting myself off. Um, after a really horror 2019 and losing my mum. So I was at a kind of probably a rock bottom piece of my business in 2020 um, in January and decided that, okay, uh, if it's up, you know, if it's meant to be, it's up to me and I'm the only one that's going to kind of um, get this business cranking and, um, you know, be able to kind of steer us in the direction that I want to go. So when COVID hit uh, in early 2020 and everybody started freaking out, um, I decided that, you know, I wanted to unpack our value proposition to agents and decide, you know, which way we're going to steer the business overall. So um, we kind of had the determination that we would come out of COVID thriving um, instead of the alternative, which was obviously uh, a really, really bad way. So we kind of put some great plans in place. We reimagined our model. We started to, you know, implement different tools in our business to give our agents better connectivity, but also just more value from being part of the business. Because obviously, whilst we weren't locked down for a really long time, it was still very scary for our agents to go through that initially. And when we were allowed back into the office again, um, you know, we definitely came out like with big energy and huge opportunity and really hit the ground running. And recently you also acquired another business up here, which was Remax Bayside Properties. So can you give us a little bit of background on how that came about? Yeah, sure. I mean, I started my business journey in 2016. So, you know, my main goals around growing the Remax Results brand um, you know, we're going really well and we were kicking some awesome goals. And um, we'd set the goal of doing 10 million this year, and we certainly have um, superseded at that, which was exciting. Um, and then I was sitting there one day and I got a phone call from the old owner of Remax Bayside Properties, and he said, Hayley, let's catch up for a coffee. And I thought, hmm, what have I done? <laughs> um, and he sat down and he said, I'm at that point where I need to retire. 
And I think you're the person to take my business and run with it and protect my legacy, but also, you know, the people that I love the most, which are the people that I've worked with in the business for the last 24 years. Um, you know, what do you think? And my immediate reaction was, <laughs> um, no way, mate. Like, seriously, I've got my own, you know, I've got my own set of uh, challenges and certainly my own team that, you know, I want to be dedicating to. Um, and because Brad is probably one of the best salespeople I've ever met in my life, it was he made very short work of those objections. And I went home thinking, I wonder if I can afford to buy Bayside. Like, maybe, oh, yeah, that would be cool. You know, there is such a great opportunity here and such, because I had bought a succession business in 2016 and kicked that off, um, again, you know, like I have, you know, that experience of change management and also, you know, like how to build a culture again and how to do all of the things that you kind of you want to do to take your business to the next level um, and start with that really, really solid base. So, um, you know, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, geez, this is a good idea. And, um, yeah, only probably three or four months later, here I am settling on a brand new business with 600 new managements and, um, you know, an extra 20 salespeople. Woo! <laughs> well, I was, I was going to ask you about that because, you know, this this being, this is not your first acquisition, but I guess, um, and I want to delve into this a little bit in a second, but how did you manage to bring um, high performers into an already high performing business? I mean, there was probably like, a, you know, some uncertainty and things like that. What was your approach to getting everyone comfortable? I think the beautiful part about high performers um, is, you know, like what's in it for them? And it's really, really important that you understand your market and as a business owner and as a leader, it's no different. You know, like I view our agents all as clients, so it's really no different than when a agent goes into a list of vendors' home. Um, they have to know their market, right? They have to know the personality type that they're talking to and the, the way that these guys tick. And because we already have a number of, you know, super high performing agents in our business, I understand what they need and how to support them and the resources that they need to go to the next level. And, you know, for all of the guys that have, you know, been part of the Bayside team, for them it was like, you know, what are your goals? What are the opportunities? What are the holes? How can I help you? You know, what type of suggestions can we make to assist you to go to the next level? You're writing three million and the goal is five. Well, how are we going to get there? And how can I help you get there? What do you need? Because I've got everything. So tell me what you need, you know. And even such a small thing as like, you know, one guy was transitioning um, from employee to contractional agent and wanting to leverage, you know, his business, but he wasn't too sure about whether or not he wanted to take on a PA. And I was like, well, why don't we outsource to my VA company um, to start with? give you the confidence and, you know, like make you feel comfortable with the fact this is a big move from you to move from that employee mentality to a business mentality. And, um, you know, then we can see how it's springboarded. He's like a couple of months in and he's loving it. He's like, oh, my gosh, my data's so clean and I've been like hitting my scraps and I'm not getting, you know, like bogged down and having to like put everything in the computer and I just feel so much better. So, you know, from our perspective, that's adding great value to him. And honestly, what an easy fix. Yeah, absolutely. Just, you know, find out what agents want and give it to them. <laughs> I think, I think yeah. that's a simple well, way to put it. Yeah. It's not rocket science, right? What do you need? No worries. Yeah. Interesting. Well, you joined us on a leadership panel in Transform earlier this year, and today on the topic of leadership, I was hoping we'd get into um, some questions I call the Leadership Diaries. We haven't done this in a while, but it's a rapid-fire series of questions to gain a bit of an insight into your leadership style and the people that have guided you along your journey, and it's meant to help influence other leaders and up-and-coming leaders and things like that. So I know you haven't seen the questions. Are you Are you ready? Yeah, I'm nervous. <laughs> well, it's 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 not too bad. If you can get through a cover sheet, you can get through these. Good. Okay. I'm ready. All right. Okay. So what was your first job and what did it teach you? I worked at Mackins and it taught me how to hustle. 
Interesting. And what is one common myth about real estate or leadership that you think should be set straight? Um, I think the myth for me is that real estate is about houses because it's 110% about people. When someone says, when I say, why do you want to work in real estate? And they say, because I love houses. I feel like saying, well, this is going to end real well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, What does the first hour of your day look like and how does it go after that? I wish (laughs) one day, I know that one day I'm going to miss this. But the first hour of my day, usually it's dark and I get like tapped on the forehead or on the shoulder or sometimes on the face um, with, Mummy, it's me, Geordie. And then after I'm like, yes, I know who it is and it's still dark, you need to go back to bed. Um, There's no going back to bed. It's breakfast. It's bottles, it's, you know, all of the craziness of the morning. Um, In my ideal mind, it's like get up, go to the gym, have some brekkie, you know, have a coffee, live your best life. But at the stage with a six-year-old and a three-year-old, with very little sleep happening between the hours of 4.30 onwards, that's how my day actually starts. Thank you for being so real about that, by the way. Um, there's probably a lot of a lot of women listening to this sighing a sigh of relief right now. But um, I have to ask you, how do you then balance the demands of, you know, running such a, a big group of officers with the demands of a young family? For me, it's just a choice, right? You get to choose um, what's hard and what makes you happy and... I actually really love my business and I love my family and I love the people that I work with and the culture that I've created. So it doesn't feel like a struggle. It sounds really cliche, but it's just, you know, like sometimes the kids are sick and you work from home and you just get on with it and you choose, you know, how you're, you know, the energy that you take into that space or that conversation or whatever it may be and sometimes that's really hard because you're tired you know and you're worn down and the kids are you know have been up all night or whatever it may be and that's not a fun time but you choose you know to be able to reset yourself before you pick up the phone or jump on a zoom call or or you know go to a meeting and yeah that's probably my biggest bit of advice Yeah, good advice. Let's talk mentors. Who are the three people that have been most influential to you in your career? I'm really fortunate. I've had some incredible mentors and I still have some incredible mentors. Um, I said to you in 2020 that I started working with um, Cherie Stora after my mum passed away. And I remember the first conversation we had, I said to her, babe, I need to get my groove back because I have been broken after losing my mum and I really, really need to start back at square one. Um, And she picked me up and she dusted me off and she hasn't let me real estate her once since, so I don't get away with much. Um, My, From a business coaching perspective, I have the most incredible business tutor. Um, Her name is Tanya Tittman. She's the Chief Innovation Officer at BDO Australia. Um, Or actually, I think she's BDO Global. Um, And she um, has taught me so much about business and really, really kind of expanded my mind about so many things. And I always recommend her. And then I guess definitely last but not least, my dad. He's he's an old Dutchie farmer and he's just a ripper. (laughs) That's a great way to describe a dad, a ripper. He is. Um, Looking back, like, you know, we all make, mistakes on our leadership journey or there's some things that we wish we'd handled differently what was one of your bigger learning experiences and what would you do differently now oh man I've had so many learnings um if I had my time again I would definitely hire slower and fire quicker um I always you know I always Uh, see the best in people and I don't ever want to stop doing that but sometimes um, you know and especially in those early years I used to just make gut you know like decisions all the time around people and hiring and they're like oh great you should come work with us awesome 
um, when sometimes they just met weren't necessarily the fit that we had for the role or that I'd definitely hire for the person and, you know, potentially didn't know what type of personality I really needed in that role. Um, and as our business has, you know, had its evolution, um, I've got a lot smarter about the types of people that I need in each seat. Um, and if I had my time again, I would have learned that lesson a lot sooner and a lot quicker. Um, yeah, that's kind of, that probably would have been the main thing from a people perspective. Um, I love our people, so it's really easy for me to kind of like go all in for them. But sometimes, actually, I just thought of one. This is definitely it. Um, you know, like from a, from a um, wearing your heart on your sleeves perspective as well, I think that's something that I could have learned a little bit earlier as well, that, you know, um, kind of going into that for everybody and getting drawn into everybody's, you know, feelings and emotions can really, really drain you. So it's important that you do set those boundaries at times and that you're strong about them, that you're not, you know, that you're not getting dragged into everybody's drama all the time because you can't be everybody's mum. Yeah, that's true, especially especially when you're their leader. Um, yeah. Mom, mom and now and leader there's is- 90 of them, it's a big family. That is, a, it is a very, it is a very big family. Speaking I'm just, of, so I'm used to the big family piece, but that's real big. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I wouldn't mind coming to your Sunday dinners. They sound like that they'd be fun. You just got to guard your potatoes, mate. Don't look away; someone will steal them off your plate. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, speaking of hiring people, um, is there a favourite question that you like to ask people in job interviews, and what does it tell you about them? There's a lot of questions that I like to um, ask people. I don't really like the generic stuff. Um, I like the stuff about like what makes them tick and who they are as people. I always like to know why they've done the jobs that they've done in the past um, and their favourite pieces about, you know, being part of different organisations. It tells you far more than, you know, the normal kind of interview questions you know, and I would be the first to say, you know, like, so I can see on your resume that you've done X, Y, and Z. You know, what else have you done that you haven't got on yet? Oh, well, I've done this and I've done that. And why why didn't you put that on your resume? Oh, it wasn't relevant for whatever reason. You know, and what was the, you know, like, what were the things that you really enjoyed about those roles? And they start to talk as, as a person rather than scripted stuff that they're prepared to talk about because I've got it on their resume or they've got a reference for that you know, job or whatever it may be. And sometimes you see like people's eyes light up about certain things and you think, wow, okay, so that is really what makes them tick. And that's what I love about that interview phase. Yeah, actually, I think that's wonderful because – LinkedIn or even a CV these days, you can almost put anything you like on a on a CV, but it's really just getting into, you know, what the person's really about. Yeah, absolutely. With new employees, how do you get someone new to understand the culture of your business? So how do you get someone new to fit in with with what's already there, which is awesome? Well, um, I often like I often spend quite a bit of time with new people in the business. Um, in whatever facets that are in there. And uh, I recently did like a mastermind session with Lorna Jane and she talked about how she does imprinting. And I went away from that situation thinking, that's so cool. Like I probably couldn't hang out with them for a week, but, you know, at least if I could hang out with them for a day, they could understand me, they could understand the passion for the business, they could understand the vision that I had, what my leadership principles are, and really, really understand like what our values are. Um, we've put a lot of work into our vision and values as a, as a team and also building out our leadership principles. So it's, it's important for me to imprint that information on those guys and, you know, like be really genuine about the fact that, you know, these are our values as a business. We are abundant and authentic people. You know, like we're big picture thinking. We're commercially minded. We get shit done. We move fast. Like these are the, you know, these are the values in our business that are constantly anchored to, you know, decisions that we make and ways in which we conduct ourselves. And, you know, often that feels a bit like wishy-washy, but they actually start to see that, oh, these, these aren't just like a decal on the wall 
or something that you get in your induction day. These are how you guys, you know, you live and breathe these values. And the other part, you know, like I always encourage, you know, our team to take 100% responsibility for their own energy and their own actions. Um, and, you know, I'll go through the leadership principles with them because it doesn't matter if you're a receptionist or you're a senior leader as part of the leadership team in our business. You're all responsible to be leaders on the front line as you, you know, as you're representing our business. And with salespeople, you know, often they're like, oh, I'm not a leader, I'm a salesperson. And I'm like, you are a leader. You're an incredible leader in the marketplace, and especially people that are writing exceptional figures. You really do need to, um, you know, stop underestimating how many people are looking to, to you for their advice and inspiration. Very, very true. Let's talk innovation for a moment. Uh, where do great ideas in your business come from, or how do you surface great ideas from the team? Oh, we, um, one of our values around being funded to big picture thinking um, means that often people are very forthcoming with their great ideas. And we always like to, um, you know, like flesh them out. But we have kind of weekly um, meetings where, as a, as a leadership team, where we go through like issues, opportunities, roadblocks, those types of things. And often in those opportunity conversations, it will pop up. So there's either been a hole in the business that we're wanting to fill um, and some different innovations or opportunities to do so. We bounce it around between the eight of us and, um, you know, often, you know, a project or an assignment will be built out of it around the fact that, okay, let's look at the comparables. Like let's look at what else is in market. And, you know, how we could be doing this better or that's really good. You know, how do we make it great? We try to apply that principle to a lot of things, um, you know, that kind of innovate and take us to the next level. So what's one great idea that you're working on now that you can tell us about and how you're making it happen? Oh, so many cool things. Um, one of our projects at the moment um, in agent services is taking things to the next level. So... Um, you know, when we're talking about like unpacking what what do the salespeople need? Like what do the property managers need? You tell me what you want and we can make this happen. So one of the bugbears that they had around, you know, ordering their prospecting or building up their marketing campaigns, doing all of those types of things that was fiddly, you know, like and they're like, oh, and then I come to this idea and I didn't like it. And we said, okay, well, how can we streamline this? How can we make it easier for them? So, you know, after their personal branding consultation takes place, they're building out their personal brand and they have 12 weeks of matching marketing that goes off the back of those. Um, you know, their social media plans, their, you know, community marketing plans, all of those types of things are actually accessible now through a QR code. So they just punch out the QR code, they select what they want and it all gets done for them and it just starts showing up on their desk or, you know, in their office. Or if they're really, really, really organised, um, they've already set delivery dates for it, so it just starts going out into their patch in the marketplace. So um, I think that was a really, really cool innovation that um, we've implemented this year that our agents just love. Yeah, amazing because it's, it's, all, it's all there and all laid out for them and that, that there's no worry or anything like that. And they plan 12 weeks in advance, so they just, you know, every quarter they have, you know, couple of hours of planning and then forget about it for the rest of the quarter and, you know, focus on what they do best, which is listing and selling property and not worrying about, you know, boring admin. Yeah, amazing. I'm, I'm sure they love that. They do. They do. It's been a tricky couple of years and, I mean, we've been quite lucky in Queensland with the amount of lockdowns that we um, that we haven't had to, to, to deal with, but still, like, the market's been a bit of a roller coaster. How do you um, approach your team if you know one of them's feeling a bit down or something like that? How do you work on um, you know motivation and picking them back up when they're perhaps not feeling it as well? Yeah, there's been a lot of times in the last couple of years that we've had to do this um, because people feel things differently, but they also feel them at different times. And I know as a leader, I was being really, really strong when they needed me the most. 
And some of them were like, and the ones that you would think would not panic because they were super high performing and had really established businesses would be having daily meltdowns, you know, at some point. And others that were, you know, like, oh, it'll pass, you know, it really, really surprised me. So it was really just a personalized and one on one approach and really tailored to the person that that was having the issue. So if it's, you know, one of the guys that, you know, is, is typically doing really, really well and all of a sudden they're starting to have anxiety or fear or, you know, about something in their business, it's just unpacking it with them, you know, like setting some goals and some achievable things, resetting their personal, um, you know, plans as well. We do business planning every year and it's nice to be able to do that because you anchor back to those things in times of adversity um, and when you're doing it one-on-one, like we obviously have monthly catch-ups with the team anyway, um, you know, business meetings or one-on-one, um, you know, catch-ups. But, you know, these, these are those opportunities to highlight the fact that many of them have come so far through all of this adversity. And it's just like it's sometimes they just need to be reminded of that, you know, and reminded how far they have come because it can be easy to lose sight of it when you, you know, get kicked in the guts a few times back to back or lose a couple of deals or, you know, lose a couple of listings. Um, you know, that can really, really hurt your confidence, particularly when there's other things going out on the world. And, and like we were saying before, this side of Christmas, everybody is tired. Like, and if ever there was going to be breakages, it would be right now. Yeah. So the goal is to get people to Christmas with a smile on their faces. I, I could just drag them. It's like I feel like it's mind build at the moment and I'm just running, dragging, you know, <laughs> just come on, guys, we're almost there. Yep, yep. Don't worry, my Christmas lights went up early this year too. So, <laughs> and I don't care. I don't care what the neighbours yeah. think. You're just um, being merry. Go you. Exactly, exactly. Um, so what is your plan for the next year? Have you set some goals for 2022? Do you have any predictions or anything that you'd yeah. like to achieve? We've got some big, hairy, audacious goals um, for 2022. So as I mentioned to you before, we're really lucky to, um, you know, smash our goal of doing over $10 million, uh, in GCI this year. Um, you know, that goal and certainly with the acquisition of the new business um, pumps up to 20. So, <gasps> okay. Um, the goal by the end of the year was to get to 1,000 uh, managements, which we will do, which is great. Um, and next year's a 1,500. So hopefully, like, you know, some organic growth there of around 300 and probably buy another a little parcel to tack on. Um, you know, our kind of crazy goals up into 2025 is just, you know, go hard or go home. And we're really, really excited about what that looks like as one big, you know, united team. We refer to ourselves internally as the dream team because we do have just the most amazing people um, within these walls. And, yeah, I'm just really, really pumped about next year and being able to kind of um, go next level with the new business and implement a lot of things in the Bayside business that they potentially haven't utilised before. But also, you know, like, uh, continue to grow the results business because that, I know, that, that's, those guys just continue to go, you know, from strength to strength and they bloody blow me away. The word unlimited is the, the the cover line that we gave you, which was a bit of a nod to, to the name of your business, but also a bit of a nod to, um, you know, how, how ambitious you are and, and just your general um, go-getting attitude and, and all of that sort of thing. How do you how do you think we put unnecessary limits on ourselves, and how do you get past that to sort of get more in a frame of mind of of your limitless potential kind of thinking? That is a really good question, and I think I think not being afraid to challenge your own thinking um, is really really important, and sometimes being able to pull yourself up mid thinking with, you know, the old Chris Helder, um, you know, limited belief strategy in the sense that, you know, like that's a really limited belief. And then being like, well, that doesn't actually apply to the situation. Like, you know, if we want to grow the rent roll by 500 this year, why couldn't we do that? You know, like, oh, we can, off we go, you know, and how to do that. And so 
you know, I, I think sometimes, um, I think sometimes you're conditioned with the way that you've been brought up. Um, you know, you, sometimes as women, it's easy to kind of play it small and not, you know, back yourself. And what have you got to lose? Like, that's the thing. You know, I don't have anything to lose in building, you know, a kick-ass business. Um, you know, the people that we have in our business are so bloody incredible. And if I went into every interaction, like, oh, why would they want to come and join our business? Oh, I don't know. There'd be no way that they would come and join us. Um, but I also know, you know, the value proposition that we offer to our agents. And we walk the talk. Like, you know, the, when we talk about being, you know, the Limitless Property Group, we're very, very strong on that because, you know, like of the Remax structure and what that means for agents when they want to build their businesses. You know, one of, you know, my kind of areas of expertise is teaching them how to, you know, build their businesses. You know, we take these incredibly, you know, um, performing salespeople and give them the resources, the tools and the training to go to the next level, you know, help them go from 300 to 500, 500 to a million, a million to two. And then now we've got people riding over three. Like it's just, you know, and to think a few years ago, that was even a reality. Most people would be like, oh, no, you know, why would they come and work with us? Why wouldn't they? Maybe that's the question that you should ask. Yeah, absolutely. So there really are no limits. There really are no limits. And, you know, like our goal is to have 75 salespeople in the business by 2025. Um, we're almost about to crack 50, um, which is a little bit exciting. Um, but, you know, when I say salespeople, I mean salespeople and associates. Um, so from, you know, from that sense, it really is, we're so limitless in the sense that, you know, as we grow, we're just going to keep upping those numbers and, um, you know, like giving it a red hot crack. Well, Hayley, it is fantastic to um, to talk to someone someone that is so positive um, in what has been such a challenging year. And it's also um, amazing to have you on our cover. We've really enjoyed getting to know you and thank you once again for joining us on the podcast. If there was one final piece of advice or one final, um, some final words to live by that you would like to leave people with, what would they be? It's a new day is probably the biggest thing that I could leave people with, that you get to choose, you know, your attitude, as we said before, or your energy as you walk into every, um, you know, situation. And every day that you wake up, it's a new day. You know, you can start again. And if yesterday was shit, don't worry, because tomorrow's a new day. And, you know, you really are limitless in, you know, in, in what you can do in that day. And, you just never know what's around the corner. So, yeah, certainly from um, from the way that I look at it, I just like to remember that tomorrow's a new day and, um, you know, the opportunities are boundless. Incredible. Hayley Van Der Ven, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Elevate podcast with thanks to connectnow.com.au. Don't forget to get access to all of Elite Agent's premium resources, including a detailed episode guide for this podcast. Visit joineliteagent.com. <laughs>